This is Beauty Reading a Book, attributed to Zhao Qingjian, who was active during the Yuan Dynasty of China. What's interesting about this silk painting is that it was actually completed between the late 18th to 19th century during the Qing period, which is several hundred years later. That's due to the fact that it's a copy, potentially with his name attributed or attached to it, which is not uncommon. As with Western art, it's tradition to copy and study great artists of the past. There isn't much recorded about this artist, but we do know that he was from Huayan in Jiangsu province and was noted for his exceptional ink calligraphy and scroll paintings of female immortals. Chinese silk paintings are not static like canvases. They move as they are unrolled. It's a physical, tactile act of revealing, from the ground of the scene and a figure's feet, and then up. It was meant to be a privilege to reveal and view. Conventionally, paintings like these depicted women in a way that either highlighted female beauty for the pleasure of the viewer, or to reinforce gender roles and idealized behavior expected of women, especially those in the imperial inner palace. Scenes can be set during any of the four seasons and located within interior scenes, such as a boudoir or library, or outside in walled gardens or natural landscapes outside city limits. Compared to other similar silk scroll paintings of women in this tradition, beauty reading a book is portrayed in status akin to inner court ladies especially as her intricate hairstyle has knotted locks of hair secured with a headdress adorned with semi-precious stones, pearls, coral, gold, kingfisher feathers, and peonies. Kingfisher feathers were both expensive and highly prized, and most often featured in the headdresses of empresses and consorts. But wealthy aristocratic women would also wear them on auspicious occasions, such as weddings and birthdays. This image of a beautiful woman reading at a desk is more than just a portrait. It's layered with cultural meanings of social customs and poetry. Her wealth and knowledge are celebrated, not just her physical attractiveness and romantic attachments. The expensive objects and furnishings around her make it clear that she was part of an affluent household that could afford to educate her which is reinforced by the stack of silk-bound books and decorative silk-covered boxes that suggest she is scholarly, or at least literate. A fantastical, mythical creature accompanies her, staring out at the viewer from its place in front of the books, as if guarding them. The fact that there are at least three different types of vinewood furnishings staged in this scene is also notable. The inlaid red lacquer of the round table, the warm yellow of the Huang Huali desk, the pale root wood of the footrest underneath, as well as a finely inlaid bench with geometric and floral patterns. On the red lacquer table stand are two vessels with wood bases that serve as flower vases. An ancient Western Zhou period bronze soon on the left and a Song period vessel on the right, which is a glazed white pong-shaped ceramic adorned with phoenix designs and bronze vessel motifs. They hold lingjer fungus, a mushroom that symbolizes health and immortality, pink roses, which symbolize love, eternal spring, and joy, and orchids, which are associated with female beauty, refined taste, and the virtuousness of Confucian ideals. Set within a green Saladon basin from the Song period, a textured and almost sparkling golden citron, called Buddha's hand, peeks out behind the other two vessels a symbol of happiness and long life, but also a sexual connotation in similar paintings. All the human senses are within this richly depicted hanging silk scroll. For example, the flowers and fruit would also convey to viewers a room saturated with fragrant aroma common to the cut flowers in Buddha's hand. You can imagine the sound of a turning page or chirping birds. An intangible emotional interpretation of this scene is one of longing. The woman doesn't care to look out at the viewer. Her attention is wholly captured by the silk-bound book in her left hand, which is likely a volume of love poetry. The only thing to moisten her right hand and provide warmth 
both literally and figuratively, is the steam from the cup of tea in place of her absent beloved's hand. The gnarls of the wood footrest evoke knots, twisting together, a symbol of fidelity and marriage. Even her jewelry-laden hair is twisted into an ornate, knotted updo. The more hidden, detailed designs further add to the overall narrative. Take, for example, the delicate porcelain teacup. On it is a blossoming tree on the left, which can represent fertility, perseverance, and purity. The pair of crested birds facing each other atop branches symbolize marital fidelity and longevity. The layers of the woman's clothing have varying patterns featuring butterflies, which symbolize love and beauty, surrounding different flowers, which suggests a felicitous union.